A very good evening to all of you present over here. So today we are going to do heterocyclic, uh, like uh, qualitative. Okay. So like, what is quality? Okay. So qualitative analysis, like how much amount is present? Okay. That was quantity. Quality is number of moles or the determin determination of the quality that whether the product has been formed, has purity or not. Okay. So we'll discuss this. Quantitative and qualitative. Okay. So in the first class, we were having the qualitative, and now we will discuss the quantitative analysis. Okay. So quantitative analysis is the method of determination of amount of a chemical in a sample. Okay. It is always expressed in a number. An acid-based hydration is an example of quantitative analysis. Okay. So, like if I am doing acid-based hydration, where I am taking sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. So if one mole of sulfuric acid is required to neutralize one mole of NaOH, then this is what is called the quantitative analysis where I can determine that how much concentration of sulfuric acid acid is required to neutralize a base. Okay. So first of all, by this, we estimate the carbon and hydrogen which is present. Okay. So it is very easy by the help of Liebig's combustion method we do this. Okay. So, so carbon and hydrogen elements are estimated together by Liebig's combustion method. Particular weight of compound is taken and heated strongly with excess copper oxide. Okay. If I am taking any compound X and it is now reacting with copper oxide in the presence of oxygen. So the hydrogen and carbon are thus oxidized to water and carbon dioxide. Okay, water and carbon dioxide. This is what we call as combustion. That in the presence of oxygen, any organic compound gives a water and carbon dioxide. So which are collected separately and weight. Okay, they will be weight because this is what the quantitative analysis is. Okay, the percent of carbon and hydrogen in the compound can be calculated. Okay, so percent car carbon is having the molecular weight of 12 and hydrogen has molecular weight of 1. So, mass of CO2 formed, how much mass of CO2 has formed upon mass of the total substance? Okay, mass of the substance, if I am telling C2H5OH. So it will be 12 to the 24 plus 1 into 5 plus 16 plus 1. So this will be 24 plus 5 plus 7. This will be 29 plus 7, which will be equals to 36. Okay. So like this, this is this can be our mass of substance. Okay. Substance like if I am taking ethanol. Then mass of CO2 form. That how much CO2 which is calculated. Okay, weight which we are weighing. Then percent of hydrogen, we know that it has the mass of 1 and 18 is what H2O is for. Okay, 16 plus 2 is 18. Okay, and if we talk about carbon dioxide, 12 plus 16 to the 32, so this will give you 44. So that is where we are taking the CO2 is having the molecular mass of 44 and this uh, water is having the molecular mass of 18. But if we talk about the carbon and hydrogen, then the molecular weight is 12 and 1 over here. Then mass of the water molecule form, which has been weighed separately, okay? And then mass of the substance like C2H, H5OH, methanol, ethanol, whatsoever is there into 1. Now estimation of nitrogen. Estimation of nitrogen is done by Dumas method for all carbonic compounds, organic compounds, having nitrogen, okay? The principle behind it is uh, that if the nitrogen containing organic compound is heated with copper oxide, free nitrogen and oxides of nitrogen formed. Okay. So if any uh, nitrogen containing organic compound is heated with copper oxide. Okay. If this was my nitrogen containing compound, it was heated with copper oxide, then free nitrogen
Okay, so then. Then free nitrogen and oxides of nitrogen. Oxides of nitrogen can be NO2 nitrogen dioxide, N2 dinitrous oxide, NO3. Okay, like this. This is nitrogen dioxide. This is dinitrogen oxide. Okay, HNO3 is nitric oxide, nitric acid. This is so like this. So if we saw that is uh, when anything, any nitrogen containing compound is able to copper oxide, then gives it gives us free nitrogen and along with the products such as carbon dioxide and water vapor. Okay, along with the products such as carbon dioxide and water vapors are formed. The oxide of nitrogen are reduced to free nitrogen as passing over heated copper. Okay, then these oxides of nitrogen are reduced to form nitrogen on passing over heated copper. This uh, like nitrogen dioxide, trioxide. Okay, so all these nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen trioxide. What happens? While uh, if they are passed over heated copper, okay, so the oxides of nitrogen are reduced to free nitrogen. Like uh, these are the nitrogen dioxide, so they are reduced to reduction happens, and we know that oxidation is loss of electron okay and reduction is gain of electron so the oxides of nitrogen reduces reduces means removal of oxygen is there and when this night oxygen is removed from nitrogen oxides then nitrogen gas is in the free form on passing over heated okay so the oxides of nitrogen are reduced to free nitrogen on passing over heated copper, okay. On passing over heated copper, this symbol, this symbol is for heat. And the whole of nitrogen is accumulated over kilowatt solution, okay. And this whole nitrogen is accumulated over KOH. KOH is our potassium hydroxide. The volume of nitrogen collected is now determined and from this the person can be calculated. Okay. Now I will weight that collected volume of nitrogen on potassium hydroxide. Okay. So percent of nitrogen. Nitrogen we know that it exists in a diatomic form. Single nitrogen is having a 14 atomic mass unit weight. So it will be 28. So this is 28 into volume of nitrogen at standard atmospheric pressure. At temperature and pressure and then 2 to 400 22,400 plus the mass of the compound which has been formed okay so this can be the mass of the compound like if I am taking uh, methyl cyanide so that will be CH3CN so this will be 12 plus 3 plus 12 plus 14 okay 24 and 27 plus 14 so give you 30, 41, okay, atomic mass unit. So this can be the mass of compound, okay. Then comes Zeldahl missile. In this method, it is commonly used for the estimation of nitrogen and it is quite an important method where food materials and fertilizers, because fertilizers, we know that they have the main constituent of ammonia, which is the protein source for plants okay it is an essential macro nutrient which is required for growth of plant so this method is simpler than dumas method it is not applicable to all nitrogenous organic compounds it is just used in food materials and fertilizers okay then comes estimation of halogen. Carrier's method. A known mass of the organic substance having halogen when given H and fuming nitric acid. Nitric acid is our HNO3. Okay, so if I am having any substance which is having the halogen and if I am heating it with HNO3 nitric acid, 
with few crystals of silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is my AgNO3. Okay, in a closed tube, like if I am taking this test tube, this AgNO3 plus HNO3 plus my Rx, which is any halogen containing compound, the formation of silver halide is which silver halide can be my AgCl. Okay, where oxygen is separated, washed, dried, and baked. From this, the mass of silver halide obtained the percent of halogen is calculated. Okay. From this mass of silver halide, okay. The percent of halide is calculated. Percent halogen is atomic mass of halogen. Okay, if I am taking chlorine, then it is 35.5. Okay, like this. So mass of the silver halide. Silver halide is along with silver and in 200 upon the molecular mass of silver halide okay molecular mass of molecular mass and mass are two different things okay molar mass is actual the mass molar mass is actually the mass of, of that silver halide and mass is the formation weight weight of that compound which has been formed it is in grams okay weight is in grams and molar mass of silver halide is in It is very specific. Okay. Like silver and AgCl. So this will be 35.5. And silver is having, uh, let's say, 40. So this will be 75.5 always. Okay. Atomic mass of silver is uh, skipping through my mind. So I am assuming it. So 75.5 AMU. Atomic mass unit will always be the molar mass. Okay. But mass of the silver halide is what the weight which has been formed, okay? And mass of the compound taken, okay? Mass of the compound taken is how much compound I have taken. And mass of silver halide is how much compound it formed after the reaction of that alkyl halide or silver halide uh, by the, uh, of the reaction of that halogen with silver nitrate and my nitric acid. And then finally, if I'm getting any silver halide, then how much is the mass of that silver halide, weight of that silver halide? Molar mass and mass are two different things, okay? So here also, the mass of the compound, mass of the compound will not take here as the molar mass. We will take the mass, which is the weight, weight which has been formed, okay? So here we will take the weight, weight in grams. Similarly, here mass of the substance, what we will take? Weight. Weight in grams. Okay, mass of the substance here also will take the weight in the grams and mass of CO2 formed. This was the total substance and this is what the CO2 has been formed after the reaction. Okay. Now, carrier's method, what is the disadvantage? It does not give satisfactory result with iodine. Like iodine is also a halogen. As silver iodide is slightly soluble in nitric acid, okay? So if it is soluble in nitric acid, then it will not be able to form a precipitate, okay? And some iodine is also produced even in the presence of excess silver nitrate, okay? Some iodine is also produced in the presence of excess silver nitrate. So we cannot correctly predict that how much iodine is present in the quality, quantity we cannot predict, okay? Moreover, for highly halogenated aromatic compounds, if the uh, like aromatic compounds, chai, iodo, benzene, if I will talk about. The results are not accurate. Okay, for these aromatic compounds, the results are not accurate. I have made this circle because if you take the benzene ring, alternate double and single bonds are present. And due to hyperconjugation and resonating structure, what happens? So again, this structure is formed and this is repeated. So there is a partial positive charge and thus this double bond we represent as a circle. Okay, this is what is showing the conjugation between five bonded aromatic 
system of the enzyme ring. Okay. Now, estimation of sulfur. Sulfur is also estimated by Cartier's method. In this case, organic compound is heated only with nitric acid. Okay. Only HNO3 is used. Sulfur present in the compound is as oxidized with sulfuric acid. Okay. Now, H2SO4. If any compound, X compound is having sulfur, then when it is treated with HNO3, then the oxidation of sulfur happens to H2SO4. Oxidation means addition of oxygen, which is treated with barium chloride. Okay, now this is treated with barium chloride, so as to form the precipitate of barium sulfate. Now this will form the barium sulfate precipitate. Precipitate is the clump formation. Okay, clump formation we know that now it is going to make a jama ho jana. Okay. Like in a beaker, clump formation. This is what is called precipitate with the barium sulfate. When you are reacting hydrogen sulfide or your sulfuric acid, when you are reacting any sulfur containing compound with nitric acid, in the oxidation happens, then sulfuric acid is formed. In the presence of barium chloride, barium sulfate precipitate are formed and these serves a precipitate. This is a clump formation, is there, so it can be easily washed and dried, and now it can be easily weighed. Okay, so from the weight mass of the barium sulfate, the percent of sulfur is calculated in that particular compound. Okay, so like sulfur is having the atomic mass of 32. Okay, 32 upon 233 and the mass of barium sulfate and mass of the compound. Okay, mass of the compound which is formed and mass of barium sulfate. Okay, barium sulfate precipitate is there. So I can easily weigh it and mass of the compound is. Initial sulfur containing compound into 100. Now, estimation of phosphorus. Phosphorus is estimated like sulfur. An organic compound is heated with fuming nitric acid, HNO3. Phosphorus, like any organic compound which is having phosphorus when it is treated with nitric acid. Then phosphorus compound is thus oxidized to phosphoric acid. It is now converted to H3PO4. This is my phosphoric acid. Which is precipitated by adding magnesium mixture. Okay. Of magnesium, I can add oh, magnesium ammonium phosphate. Also, I can add. Okay, the precipitate of magnesium ammonium phosphate is ignited to obtain magnesium pyrophosphate. Okay. Magnesium is added. Then what happens? Magnesium phosphate. Magnesium phosphate is formed. Uh, magnesium ammonium phosphate. Okay, milk of magnesia is added in here. Magnesium ammonium phosphate is formed. Magnesium. Ammonium phosphate is formed, and this magnesium ammonium phosphate now decomposes. Okay, so this precipitate is there of magnesium ammonium phosphate when it is ignited or heated, then it is giving you magnesium pyrophosphate, which is Mg2P2O7. In ammonia is removed, and water molecule is there. Magnesium pyrophosphate is weighed and the percent magnesium pyrophosphate, okay, magnesium pyrophosphate is Mg2P2O7 is weighed and the percent of phosphorus calculation is percent of phosphorus, we know the molecular mass is 62 upon 222 into mass of magnesium pyrophosphate which is Mg2P2O7 and the mass of the compound, okay, this is the phosphorus Containing compound. Okay. Then determination of molecular formula for compound. Molecular formula for compound expresses the actual number of atoms of various elements present in a molecule. Okay. Molecular formula, if I'm talking about of ethanol, then C2H5OH, then of carbon, two atoms are there, of hydrogen, six atoms are there, and of oxygen, one atom is there in the ethanol system. So this constitutes the molecular formula. Okay. Maybe either the same as the empirical formula or some few multiple of 
molecular formula can be equal to empirical formula or can be a multiple of it, where n is a whole number n cannot be a irrational number it is a whole number okay the value of n is obtained by dividing the molecular mass by the empirical formula mass. So like if i am having uh, six molecules okay and molecular weight is 12 now what i will do 72 was my empirical formula mass of ethyne molecule or c6 like here if uh, ch4 is 16 and uh, four moles of methane were taken okay so 48 will be the empirical formula for butane okay butane where cn h2n plus 2 so if i am taking four molecules c4 h into 2 into 4 plus 2 which will be equals to 8 plus 2 10 so c4 h10 okay so like this if i draw the molecule over here these are the 10 hydrogens of four carbons and the molecule of butane so in dumas experiment if this zero point uh, this is a question of organic substances yielded this much of nitrogen gas at 14 degrees celsius and this 758 millimolar uh, mercury pressure okay this is mmhg of pressure millimole mercury pressure calculate the percent of nitrogen at the compound okay so we know that nitrogen volume at stp is equals to v1 plus both the pressure at 273 calvin upon temperature plus 273 calvin upon 760 okay so if i will substitute the values volume which is given okay how much volume was there as 31.7 cc into pressure this was the pressure this is the unit of pressure uh, millimole of hg mercury 758 minus they have already tell that aqueous tension at 14 degrees celsius is 12 m millimole so here 12 at 27 degrees celsius and what at 14 degrees celsius so 14 plus 273 Okay, 273 plus 4 upon 14 plus 273 into 760. So this gives you 229.6 ml. And mass of 29.6 ml of nitrogen is I know N is equals to W upon M. So if I have to get the mass, so like uh, weight was 2 to 4, uh, mass is 28. This is for the moles. N is the number of moles. And weight is how much weight I am taking. Here. So weight is my 29.6, but I know. The for calculating the mass, it is 28 upon 2 to 4 0 0, which is equal to 29.6 gram. Okay. And percent of nitrogen is 28 upon 2 to 4 4 0 into 29.6 upon 100 upon 0 0.1877 gram, which is the mass which was taken. Okay, mass compound which was taken. And here, this is the molecular mass. And uh, 29.6 ml is the volume. Okay, so this gives you 19.72 is the percent of nitrogen which was present in that organic substance. Okay. Now, qualitative analysis is the component of a chemistry that deals with recognizing the elements how much quality or ingredients that make up a compound mixture okay whereas quantitative analysis is to estimate the quantity of the percent of okay, a percent of organic compound present any organic substance which is present in a compound okay the determination of ingredients of certain salt solution is an example of qualitative research okay Determination of ingredient of certain salt solution, like how much quality of a substance is present. Description, okay. So then, what is quantitative? Quantitative means calculating a quantity, setting it to a value. For instance, you might calculate the rate of reaction by seeing how much seconds it takes for a change to occur. Like a piece of magnesium ribbon, dissolve an acid of different concentration. So, if I will take the two. moles of magnesium okay so mg 2 mg 
if I am taking H2S of four sulfuric acid, two molar, four molar. So obviously, four molar will be able to dissolve it much more highly as compared to two molar. Then what are the methods of quantitative analysis? We just saw that it is the objective measurement for the statistical, analytical, and numerical analysis of the data. Like numerical is how much percent of nitrogen carbon is present. Okay. Then what is the advantage? Okay. So at the end, guided unbiased research and analysis support rejects the conclusions. Okay. So gives the all the systems. Okay. And when collecting and analyzing data, each move is systematic to reduce the bias. A major advantage of this method is that tests for a wider population are too accurate and generalized. Okay, so this was for our quantitative analysis. Where for carbon and nitrogen, we saw that in carbon, the uh, best method is used for the combustion method, which is Liebig's combustion method, where we see the method by which we see the uh, atomic mass and mass of the substance which has been taken okay mass of the carbon dioxide always remains the same like carbon is having uh, 12 and uh, oxygen combines to give 44 here so mass of co2 will be 44 over here and mass of the substance which is actually the weight which has been taken initially then for nitrogen due mass method is there Gildal's method is there for the nitrogen estimation of food products and in fertilizers, because ammonia is the major micronutrient which is required for the growth of the plants. And then estimation of halogen can be done by eukaryotes method. But then bromide and iodide cannot be easily determined as iodide has the solubility and silver nitrate solution. And sometimes iodide extra is formed. That is why silver chloride or halides are determined by carious method, except for iodine. Then sulfur. The sulfur of estimation is done by the qualitative quantitative method by Cartier's method only. In this, sulfur is also reacted with nitric acid and then barium sulfate is formed, whose precipitate is weight. And then for the estimation of phosphorus, Cartier's method is again used, in which phosphorus is also used, uh, reacted with nitric acid. And then this phosphoric acid is formed, which when treated with the magnesium, magnesium mixture, miracle of magnesium you might have heard. Okay, so then it forms magnesium ammonium phosphate which gives, gives the last, at last, magnesium pyrophosphate, which is when weight gives you the actual percent of phosphorus, which is present in that compound. Then if you have to find the molecular formula, molecular formula is just the ratio, multiplicity. It is basically the multiplicity. So molecular formula is equals to multiplicity of empirical form. Then this was the numerical which we did. So at 273 is the standard Calvin pressure of the degree, uh, Calvin temperature for the degree Celsius and uh, mmHg millimeter, uh, millimole of uh, mercury uh, pressure is the unit for the pressure. So we can uh, easily determine the percent of nitrogen which is present in any organic compound by the Dumas method. And then what is qualitative analysis? Qualitative analysis is for the how much quality or how much ingredients are present or how much components are present in my compound. And quantitative analysis is for the percent analysis and that how much purity is there in the quantitative analysis. Okay, so it uh, statistically it is very fine and it gives us accurate data and the analysis is done very easily by this method. Okay, and quantitative research if we talk about quantitative research is quite different and uh, it deals with the unbiasedness. Uh, like there is no bi biasness, there is no bhed uh, 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 it is unbiased research and analysis support or reject the conclusion. Okay, so it totally support or reject the conclusion. Okay, so I think this qualitative research is also clear to you, like qualitative method of uh, estimation of organic compounds and quantitative method of estimation of organic compounds are clear. So here quantitative methods include JZAR method and which is very important and combustion method, Liebig's method are also very important. Okay, Dumas method for the estimation of nitrogen. Hope this is clear.